Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video first we're gonna talk about this controversial gentleman right here, Marcelo De Angelis, also known as Horse MD, who finally made a statement, who finally addressed the public after all that fiasco that happened at the Expo Super Show, where he, as you guys know, failed to make the weight. It wasn't even close, he failed for six and a half pounds, and he addressed the public finally, so let's hear what he has to say about his future plans. He starts this letter with a short sentence, go to open. Then he says, the whole period of transition to classic taught me a lot. Unfortunately, the difficulties in losing weight affected my immunity, physical and mental health before I could finish uh, the first competition and God knows I tried until the end with all my strength, putting my goals and expectations above my health. My coach and wife were not in favor of me choosing Classic in the beginning, because they both knew my difficulties, and so during the journey, people who really liked me, when they saw me degrading myself in search of weight, changed their minds. So after the stomach virus, I was advised to stop there, I was wrong once again to go all the way. I never wanted to disappoint, I always go to the end. But I was also disappointed in myself for letting all this happen and I will never put anything above my health, not just once again. My happiness is in the open. I really appreciate those who are by my side and trust me. I also appreciate all the good energies of those who accompany my work. The best is yet to come. I will strategize with the right people who care about me and dedicate myself to bringing the best physique of my life. So there you go guys, basically the take home message is he's not gonna do the classic again, uh, he's gonna do the open from now on, which was kind of expected, I mean he's not as tall as he thought, we were all very suspicious about how is he gonna make the weight, how is it even possible, I mean does he have hollow bones or something like that, but apparently he was just wrong about his height, and even though he got sick like a week before the show and lost uh, how many, 20 pounds <laughs> in a couple of days, he still was not even close to making the weight. So he's definitely way bigger than he needs to be for classic physique. I mean, he is definitely for the open right now. If he wanted to do the classic, I mean, he has the lines, he could do that if he downsized. But with all this size, with all this muscle, yeah, no, it's not happening. I mean, look at this freaking guy. I mean, this is a bodybuilder. This is not a physique, a classic physique guy. No, look at this. Just a look at this, if more guys like this, with these kind of aesthetics, actually stayed in the open, maybe open would change a little, I mean look at his physique once again, what a beautiful physique, and yes, this is the open bodybuilding physique, there are also physiques like Raphael Brandao, Samson Dauda, Regan Grimes and others, Sergio McMillan was of course one of the best in open bodybuilding as far as aesthetics, and so what I'm trying to say is no, bodybuilding, open bodybuilding is always gonna be about mass, guys like Big Ram are gonna win, but it's definitely a great thing to have an addition of these kind of guys. They won't win the Mr. Olympia, they will win some shows, but there is a lot of fans who prefer these kind of physiques, who want to see these kind of physiques in bodybuilding, not in other divisions, but in bodybuilding. It's really nice to have a variety of physiques, and I think... And I do think Horse MD Marcelo D'Angelis is meant for the Open. Here is your Puerto Rico Pro winner, Hassan Mostafa. You compare this physique to Marcelo D'Angelis, and it's night and day, it's a completely different kind of physique. There are a lot of people who prefer these kind of freaky looking physiques, but there are also a lot of bodybuilding fans who just don't like this kind of look, who want to see some classic lines in the open, who like to see some aesthetics. So I think it's a great thing that we're gonna see Marcelo D'Angelis in the open, hopefully he's gonna compete again soon enough, as soon as his health is in check and he feels good mentally, and hopefully he will eventually win a pro show and get to the Mr. Olympia, and we're gonna have a wonderful addition in the open bodybuilding. Another interesting question is, would Marcelo D'Angelis even win the Expo Pro Show if he made a weight? Because I'm looking at these guys in the top three, and in this back double bicep, they all look so freaking impressive. And we all saw Marcelo at the weighings, and it seemed like he was very flat. It seemed like he was not exactly shredded, hard and full. It looked like he was a little bit soft, you know, probably because he was way too dehydrated and uh, just not carved up and... You know, he probably wasn't in great shape because he was in the hospital, so even if he made the weight, I don't know if he would win, maybe not. He made his best, sure, he would beat these guys, probably. 
And I'm not even sure about that so much because these guys here look like freaking bodybuilders who somehow made the weight. They all look so massive and so shredded. So I'm not even sure how well would Horse MD do in this lineup, in this show. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Before we keep going guys, I just want to tell you about the Vintage Build. It is basically a, a very unique product. It is BCAAs, glutamine, creatine and other ingredients. And it is great tasting. You have so many different flavors. You can choose your own. You can drink it whatever you want. When you're sitting at your desk, when you're training, before training, after training. And it's really awesome during these hot summer days because it is really refreshing. And it's also going to help you build more muscle. So if you guys want to support my channel, you can try Vintage Build. You have a link in the description of this video. And use the code DIVON for 12% discount. I mentioned Hassan Mustafa, and this is his updated four days out of Orlando Pro. And uh, yeah, he looks still lean, still very shredded, conditioned. Smaller than usual, I mean smaller than last year, but conditioned, like he was at Puerto Rico Pro where he won. This pose looks pretty nice on him, he looks nice and round, kind of, dare I even say, aesthetic. But that's probably because he's hiding his waistline with his arms, he's probably tucking in his stomach from the front and from the back. You can see, you know, that blockiness in his waist and the narrow delts, uh, which doesn't help his silhouette. But from the side, he looks pretty good, he looks pretty thick, he looks pretty conditioned. The only thing that is not super conditioned on his physique is his glutes, but everything else is really spot on. And based on the lineup of this Orlando Pro, I think Hassan Mustafa is going to win his second Pro Show this year. So as you can see from the a little bit more known guys, we have Tony O'Burton, we have Max Charles. And also interestingly, we have Phil Klahar, who was battling hard against Tian Valier and Steve Kuklo last year. And those guys are some heavy hitters. You know, those are like top 7, top 6 even Mr. Olympia competitors. And Phil Klahar was actually beating them from the back. So this guy, if he is spot on, he needs to be completely spot on, he needs to peak perfectly. We saw him when he is not at 100%, it doesn't look very good. But when he is spot on and he knows how to be, he is dangerous. And if he, if he repeated his Texas Pro Show look, I think he would beat Hassan. But we have to see about that, we don't know that. It's actually probably more likely that he will fail with conditioning. I don't want to sound uh, negative, but it's true. We'll see, we'll see though. Uh, also, we have Jason Love, who made his transition from the classic physique. Uh, he grew, he definitely grew, but now he's like in the middle, between the classic and the open. And uh, did he bring conditioning? No, he's not exactly shredded. You can see it here, especially on the right for there in the glutes. Look at the glutes here, I mean, they're definitely not completely shredded. And this is like the most recent update of his. So he probably tried to stay as big, as full as possible. He was probably worried about sacrificing too much muscle by not eating enough or doing too much cardio. But I think this is a mistake. This is usually a mistake. When guys try to do this, they just come fat and it doesn't look good on the stage. It may look good to you in the mirror or in the gym photos, but on the stage, unless you're shredded, you won't look very good. You need to be shredded. It's conditioning that wins the shows. But if you want to compete in the open against the mass monsters, you need to be freaking big. And I think this guy is not big and not even conditioned, so I don't think he's going to do that well. But we'll see, maybe I'm wrong. The last name on this list is uh, Andrea Mosti. And I thought, how many Andreas are doing bodybuilding shows? We have Andrea Presti, Andrea Muzi, and now Andrea Mosti. But actually, this was a mistake. Andrea Mosti exists, and he's a bodybuilder, but a man's physique competitor. This is the actual Andrea that is doing this show. It's Andrea Presti, uh, who looks uh, big, who looks uh, sick right now. I thought he was done with his competitive season, but no, not just yet. We'll see how he will do at his show, but he's definitely an interesting addition with his physique. It's definitely a completely different shape from that of Hassan Mustafa, for example. It is definitely closer to Phil Lahar kind of physique. So yeah, that's Orlando Pro for you guys. As soon as it happens, I will make a video about it right here, so subscribe to my channel. Alright, next we have a physique update of Quinton Area. Now, this guy looked like a freaking monster, like an absolute monster in his off-season. Now, when he lost some weight, you can see that it was a lot of water weight. He was not, he's not really that big, he didn't gain that much muscle, but he definitely did improve a little bit. Now, he's going to be facing, I believe, Ian Valier. I think he's also prepping for one Vancouver Pro Show. 
Quinton and uh, Ian are both Canadians, so they will compete over there in Canada. And I think this is going to be our top two, Ian versus Quinton. When I saw Quinton's photos back in the offseason, I thought this guy might even beat Ian. I thought he has so much potential to even win the Mr. Olympia one day. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Ronnie Coleman in a sense. Like he has those kind of uh, big arms, great back, uh, small waist, big big limbs, like big, big legs too. Uh, especially legs, his legs are really good. But he still needs to fill up. He definitely still needs to add more muscle. Uh, Ian is just much thicker. I mean, Quinton right now, right here, is 276 and Ian is 269. So, like, 5 pounds, 6, 7 pounds difference. But Quinton is much, uh, much taller. And I think Ian is in much better conditioning right now at three weeks out. So, I have no doubts that Quinton is going to be ready in time, but he will have, uh, that he will be in shape for sure. He will. But I still think Ian is just much bigger, harder, more seasoned competitor. And I don't think Quinton is going to be able to beat Ian. Not just yet. Maybe in a few years. I think he has more potential structure-wise. But as far as like sheer muscularity, graininess, hardness, conditioning, like the, the, the muscle density, Ian is still ahead, I believe. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.